We've been working our way through dealing with and working with bitmap objects in CorelDRAW X6. And in our last few sessions, we went through color management, setting up for good spot color and halftone conversion in CorelDRAW X6. And we took a look at how we can recreate logos working with both raster and vector, pulling raster elements from our bitmaps and then doing vector tracing and adding vector text to expedite our production art workflow. And in this session, I want to take a little bit more of an in-depth look at pulling objects apart in Corel Draw and creating color separations that will work as monochromes. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here. And we're going to be working with this Hot 107 logo, which we have set up at 300 dpi. Now, one thing you want to be aware of is that if you have very poor resolution, you're not going to be able to take these images apart in PhotoPaint. There's just not enough information to work with here. You can see how the highlights kind of pixel out and blend in the green. We just wouldn't be able to take this apart. And when you're dealing with that, you probably want to contact your clients and ask them if they can get you a higher resolution image. If they can't, then you'll probably have to manually convert it to vector. But even that, with this image here, would be very difficult to do because you can see all the detail that's been lost because of the low resolution. So you always want to be aware when you're analyzing your projects, what type of resolution are you dealing with and can you work with that in PhotoPaint? This one we can work with. There's a couple of issues we'll need to deal with and we'll take a look at that in PhotoPaint. I'm going to go ahead and select this and come up here and click on Edit Bitmap and that'll open our graphic in Corel PhotoPaint. Once it's open in PhotoPaint, I want to go ahead and maximize this. First thing I usually do is I zoom in. I want to see if I've got anti-aliasing or not. And I do in this graphic. There is anti-aliasing here. And I'm going to want to deal with that as I try to take this apart. Now this is a very forgiving graphic because it is a very rough graphic and very artistic. And you can see there's some areas here of color that are going to be kind of tricky trying to pull this apart. But we can do it effectively in photo paint. The next thing I want to do is I want to go to mask color mask. I'm going to go ahead and reset. I'm going to come over here and grab the eyedropper, left click, come over here and click on black. I'm going to click on this eye so I get a preview. Now looking at this it looks like we got the black. We can see the mask coming in. But this can be a little bit deceptive because if we zoom in and then we go to mask, color mask, and click on the preview you can see we got most of the pixels but not everything. So what I would do at this point is I would just go ahead and deselect this, select OK. I'm going to go to Mask, Mask Outline, and I'm going to go to Expand. And now I've got all that black. Even though I've gone out one pixel into some of the way, I'll select OK. Next up is going to be Object, Create, Cut Selection. Now I have this Object 1 set up here in Photo Paint in my Objects Docker. I'm going to change the name of that to Black. Just so note I'm dealing with when I'm dealing with these different objects in photo paint. Now if I click off, you can see there's my black. It's been pulled out. Next up is going to be go back to background. Very important because if you try to select a color mask in black for orange and there's no orange there, you're not going to get anything. But if you go back to background, go to mask, color mask again, go ahead and click on reset or just grab your eyedropper here and click on the orange. And you can see there's my orange. I'm going to select OK, and then I'm going to go to Mask, Mask Outline, and I'm going to expand one pixel and select OK. Next thing, Object, Create, Cut Selection. And we'll click on this, and we'll call this Orange. So there's my black and my orange pulled out of my graphic. Go back to Background. Go back to Mask color mask, come over here and click on let's say the purple, select OK, we'll go to mask, mask outline, we're going to go to expand, one pixel again, select OK, object, create, cut selection, and now I have my purple cut out. And we'll go ahead and click here and we'll change this to purple and select OK. Go back to my background, take a look to turn off these eyes here and see how much we missed here. We did miss some data here, but we'll take a look at how we can fix that after we get these all pulled apart. 
I'm going to go back to my background here and I'm going to go ahead and go to mask, color mask. I'm going to grab my eyedropper, click on my green, and select OK. I'm going to go to mask, mask outline. I'm going to select expand by one pixel and select OK. I'm going to take this object, make sure we're on background, object, create, cut selection. Now I've pulled all my colors out of my background and I can take a look at them as I click back through here. Right there. And there's all my colors pulled out. We'll zoom out and there's my logo taken apart. And actually, this, is, this could be worked with. Now there's a couple of areas that I want to deal with this and I want to look at the order of how I'm going to print working with this. And we'll take a look at this back in photo paint just to make sure we've got, yeah, you can see this is all knocked out as white and this is what we're dealing with. Now this is just our colors set up in photo paint. Now my analysis of this is the fact that I'm dealing with some gaps but those will probably fill when they're being screen printed. But looking at this I would say we're probably going to be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and take this back into paint by selecting save. I'm not paint, excuse me, draw. Now I've got this back in draw because I saved it. I want to go back to draw here and see, yes, okay, now I've got four objects on layer one. I'm going to go ahead and select ungroup. I'm going to get this first one and it's going to tell me black and I know that that's black because I named it that back in paint. I'm going to go bitmap, mode, black and white. I'm going to go to line art. I'm going to bring my threshold up all the way and you can see, wow, that really went up quite a bit. I'm going to bring that back a bit. Now what's happening is, is that there's some information left over in this graphic from working with it in Photo Paint and you can see that. I'm going to hit cancel and click on this. You can see that that is just my black, but if I go to bitmaps mode and black and white, I've got like a full color preview there, which is kind of like a bug. So what I want to do is take this graphic, I'm going to hit control Z because it's all masked out, is that I want to go and go bitmaps, convert to bitmap, I'm going to select RGB, no anti-aliasing, no transparent background, or I could go grayscale and select OK at 300 dpi. Now I'm going to go bitmaps, mode, black and white, and I'm not going to have all that other data to work with anymore. Now I can take a look at this and go to line art and then bring my threshold up all the way and select OK. Now if I left click I'm going to make my background transparent and my foreground is going to stay as black. Now that's my black. The next thing I want to do is hold down Alt and underneath that I've got my orange. Same thing here, bitmaps, convert to bitmap, RGB, OK bitmap, mode, black and white. We want to go with line art and we want to bring this all the way up to the 255 and select OK. Now this we can right click with let's say an orange, left click to knock out our background and that is our orange. Hold down Alt, click again, now I can see that I've got purple. Bitmaps, convert to bitmap, RGB color, RG, RG, RGB color, 300 dpi, select OK. Bitmaps, mode, black and white, line art, and we want to bring this all the way up. Select OK, come over here and right click on a purple, there's our purple. Hold down Alt one more time, and we've got object 4 and I didn't rename that and my guess that would be our color green and I'm just gonna go ahead I'm gonna click my way through here let's see we've got no fill here we've got the same there there's orange here's purple but I want to take the fill out so I'm gonna left click and obviously next is our green bitmaps convert to bitmap again RGB 300 dpi select OK now 
bitmap mode black and white I'm going to go to line art bring our threshold all the way up and select OK come over here and right click on a green left click to knock out our background color and then zoom in and take a look and there's our color separations set up for us now this is a very forgiving logo but I can see some issues in here I can see that with this purple the way I've got this set up I might want to expand that a little bit because it's not really coming up against my green the way I'd like it to and that's really the only issue I see in reviewing this the rest of it all looks pretty good but I want to take a look at the original logo to see if there was space there or not and apparently it looks like there might have been some white in there I can see it there so maybe that's not off I'm gonna go ahead I should have saved a duplicate of this but I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna hit control Z back to my original logo to before when I created there we go and here's the original logo and is there some white yes there is some white gaps in there so that'll be fine then go ahead and paste this back in and we'll bring this down but here we are set up as spot color separatable or at least color manageable colors in CMYK now if I wanted to print these color separations I'll go ahead and change all of this here I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything here also change my page and I could set this up however I wanted to print it out and take this and convert it to Pantone colors and then I could print out my spot color separations with it I know I went to CMYK colors but I could change this to Pantone colors very easily and it would print as separations I could come through here and let's see we've got our black so I'll come up here to a black right click there's a black I'll hold down alt click again Actually, I think I'll just run this through Simple Seps, Advanced Tools, and I'll go to Simple Seps, and I'll go to Separation Options. Now I want to go to Color Management. I'm going to create a palette. I'm just going to go with the colors in the design, and I'll click on One Click Conversion. OK. And now I've got everything set up as Pantone Spot Colors. And if I want to separate this, I can go to my Advanced Tools, Simple Seps, and I can come into my Separations. I'm not going to convert to halftones because everything's going to be solid black and just simply click on generate separations and simple steps will set up my color separations for me here literally in a matter of seconds now if I wanted a white base for that I could set that up also but you can see here in a matter of just a few minutes I've gone from a client supplied raster image to having fully prepared color separations without doing any work in vector whatsoever. We've done everything in photo paint, brought it back into draw, and then set it all up as monochrome bitmap. So you really want to understand how to work with these tools. It'll take you some time to get used to it so that you can take your graphics apart in photo paint and then set them up as spot color separatable art in Corel Draw. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session.